Hi everyone and welcome to week six. In week six, if you click on the overview, we're going to be reading chapter nine and you have the midterm exam, which is, which is going to be covering uh, everything that we've done through weeks one through six. This week I've posted some very important videos for you to review. I've posted the chapter nine PowerPoint, the chapter nine teaching summary, Here's the instructor guidance video right here. The ancillary materials, which has a lot of interesting resources, and the midterm exam as well. For this week, we're going to look at competitive markets. When we look at competitive markets, we're going to look at consumer surplus and, cons and producer surplus. Consumer surplus is anything below the demand curve and above the equilibrium, whereas producer surplus is anything below the price and above the supply curve. When we look at consumer surplus, think of a, a concept where a consumer is willing to pay, in this example, $7 for this good, but only has to pay $5. Willing to pay 7 only has to pay 5 In theory, they've saved $2 because they're only going to pay $5 for the good. You'll notice that consumer and producer surplus is something that's being maximized when we look at stores. Stores like to maximize their total surplus. They're trying to get the most they can out of consumers, but what the problem is, you'll notice that there's always going to be this deadweight loss that exists if the government gets involved in markets. And the way government gets involved in markets is they'll get involved when we look at taxes. Taxes is a very important way where governments will get involved because markets will respond to difference in taxes. Now, we look at another concept we're going to look at this week. We're going to look at types of market failure. And types of market failure are going to be externalities, taxes, public goods, and all of these types of market failure are going to rely on the government getting involved to bring about changes. Now, markets are not able to adjust on their own. When markets are not able to adjust on their own, they're going to need support. And this support is going to come from the role of competitive markets. Another type of market failure is looking at price controls. And price controls are looking at price floors and price ceilings. An example of a price ceiling would be rent control. And an example of a price floor would be minimum wage. Minimum wage is the lowest that can be charged in markets. And price ceilings are looking at the highest that can be charged in markets. When you look at minimum wage, you notice that the government establishes that price level. When you look at price ceilings, you'll notice the government establishes it that level as well. An example of price ceilings are affordable housing. And affordable housing is when you look at New York City and you have rent control in those areas. And rent control brings about a lot of challenges in markets because rent control is not going to bring about efficiency in markets sometimes. So for this week, I want to go over the midterm exam, and I'm going to go over the 25 questions. I might not go over every one of them, but I'm going to go over the 25 questions that we're going to be looking at. If we look at $20 and we establish a price ceiling, that means that at $20, this is the most that can be sold and purchased at that amount because nothing can be higher than, an and than that amount. Question two is looking at consumer preferences. Question three is looking at how firms maximize profit. It's a profit maximizing rule. Question four is looking at optimization. Question five is looking at the difference between competitive and non-competitive markets. Question six is looking at how to calculate the marginal product of the seventh worker when I give you the marginal or the average product of the sixth worker. Average is finding 
output divided by number of workers, margin was looking at the additional amount that's produced. Question nine, the price between AVC and ABC, that's going to be looking at the AFC. Basically, it's the average fixed cost. If isoquants are straight lines, what does that represent? If perfectly competitive firms are earning pro uh, positive economic profits, you'll notice that the price is always going to be above the average total cost. Technological de uh, development, how does that influence supply? Question 15 is looking at elasticity. If it falls more on consumers, consumers probably are buying more of that particular good. And less is going to fall on suppliers. Theory of consumer behavior is based on what assumptions? What is the bandwagon effect? Consumer behavior. When we look at preferences, what is not one of the assumptions? What shifts the demand curve for beer? Now, what would not shift the demand curve for beer in this example? And then question 25 is looking at the different types of goods. So those are some of the questions that you're going to see on the exam. Make sure to review those and let me know if you have any questions, but I look forward to your effort as you'll have one attempt, 60 minutes on the exam.